Yeah. So you moved over to MakerBot about four months ago. Yep. I started trying to look at you. Sorry. Yeah, just look at the camera or look at me. Look at me. That's okay. fine. Sure. <laughs> no problem. Okay. So I started, yeah, um, I moved here in January to start working for MakerBot. Um, yeah. Moved out from Pittsburgh to New York. Um, yeah. And I'm doing software development. And so um, basically everything from the firmware that runs on the machine to the software that you use um, on the computer to take your model and print it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> What's your background? My background is actually electrical engineering. Um, and I did like commercial computer chip design for a while. And then I sort of... Uh, fell off of the like engineering bandwagon and I went off and did art for a while and uh-huh. um, then I realized that what I really I really do love engineering. It's just I wanted to do creative engineering. That's what, mm-hmm. that's what this actually is. make things yeah, actually yeah, yeah. see some result uh, mm-hmm. of your own. Yeah. yeah. Sure. So. Sure. So you were in uh, Pittsburgh for a while. Yes. And what did you do there? Um, so I started off in Pittsburgh. I actually worked at the um, Children's Museum, or it's, I forgot which it's called. It's like basically the Pittsburgh Children's Museum. Uh-huh. Um, and I had a uh, art residency there. So oh. for the summer um, of 2009, uh-huh. I basically lived right next to the museum, hung out in the museum all the time, talked to kids, played with exhibits, mm-hmm. and then I developed an exhibit of my own. Um, and it's called the uh, it's called the Ferris Wheel, actually. It's kind of a, it's a pun. Um, but in, basically what it is is it's this three foot wide wheel and it spins slowly and mm-hmm. you stick magnets to it um, so there's these like kind of bright colorful fridge magnets mm-hmm. and as it spins it acts like a music sequencer so Ooh. it's got a camera on it mm-hmm. and it acts like a music box so you lay down magnets and as they pass ones that are closer to the center come out as like lower tones than the ones mm-hmm. on the outside um, and it's kind of the pun actually the inspiration came from the fact that the guy who invented the ferris wheel you ride actually lives like grew up right next to the children's museum in the same neighborhood so really yeah so we were huh. walking through the neighborhood one day and i saw this little plaque first and i was thinking ha ah, that's funny and mm-hmm. then i made it so it was great oh fantastic yeah so, yeah 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 and then you got involved with uh the hack pittsburgh uh, group and yeah actually that was one of the um when i was i was living in phoenix and i was trying to decide what to do and one of the one of the actually big reasons that i moved to pittsburgh was because i saw that there's a hacker space starting at hack mm-hmm. pittsburgh and they realized, like, okay, there's a hackerspace, I'll move there then, that's cool. And um, I was involved in Hackerspace for a long time. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you write for Make or yeah, involved with? I have been writing for the Make block, um, which is it's, it's a really cool opportunity, I guess. And, and mm-hmm. My background, I mean, I guess my like school background is all engineering, and this is more writing and sort of interviewing people and things mm-hmm. like that. So it's mm-hmm. a lot of really cool. I don't know. I, I love talking to people, especially about things that are that are awesome. And, yeah. What uh, what really turns you on? Is it that people uh, connection? The... A lot of it. Yeah. Actually, there's a balance. I think if I if all I ever do is talk to people about awesome ideas, I get really angsty because I want to go make them. So then I have to leave and just go make things for a while. Uh-huh. Um, but mm-hmm. I do like making things with people, which is where the hackerspace really comes uh-huh. in. And you end up like working in an environment with a lot of other creative people. I think is the best. Because mm. I'll have some ideas, and then someone else will come up with like a way better thing to do with it, and then we'll go back and forth, and by the end we'll have something that like we've never even thought of, and, mm-hmm. and then if we're lucky, we'll have it made too, because we've been making it at the same time. So. Sure, sure. And that was a natural fit for MakerBot. Absolutely, yeah. Um, I actually thought for a long time it was, it was a really somewhat difficult decision because I was working for myself, and I could kind of wake up when I wanted to and hang out with my cat, and I was thinking I'm going to have to get up and go to work in the morning. Um, but what it turned out is that I'm working with a group of people who all have complementary skills here. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's people that do things and love them that I absolutely hate to do. And they hate to do the things that I'm doing. And we all want everything to happen. So we can just, everyone works on things that they want to do and it all works out. And it's, mm-hmm. it's really great to be in a team like that. That's fantastic. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it was easy for them to recruit you and ask you to come over. Yeah, it was. Actually, yeah, there's actually a funny story about that. But yeah, so. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, actually, so my friend, one of my friends from Make, um, actually met one of the guys here uh, during a some sort of like it was like a hidden truck event they have in, in New York, <laughs> um, where it's like it's a secret truck thing. So they don't really tell anyone about it until the day it happens, and then even then you only find out about it from if you know some secret person or something mm-hmm. like that, and they say come to this place and there's all these trucks parked on a street and you go into the trucks and then there's something awesome inside of it. Um, so like there's like a hot tub truck where on a, like basically someone has this giant truck 
then inside of it, they built a hot tub complete with a heating unit and everything. And there's another truck next to it that's got like um, the changing room and stuff like that. So you uh -huh. go in this thing, and then like there's a hot tub, and it's just like the middle of the thing. So anyway, they met up there, and he was mentioning that they were looking for software development. Mm -hmm. So she said, mm -hmm. "Yeah, you should talk to Matt." So mm -hmm. that's how I got caught up. And I was in Japan, and I came back like directly from Japan to do this interview, and was totally like brain dead because I just traveled across the. That's sure. World, so. Well, that was just after we were at uh, Make so, Tokyo, right? Yep, that was right after the Make Tokyo meeting. So oh, actually, awesome. Like, the day after. <laughs> 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 yeah, it was literally like, got on a plane on Sunday, or Monday, I guess, and then yeah, came, yeah. came here. Mm -hmm. I guess I got to sleep, and then on Tuesday I came here. So. Yeah, I took the video yeah. of your spoon uh, creation yeah. there, yeah, and yeah, then, yeah, the, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, and then you came over here and yeah. hooked up with MakerBot. That's fantastic. The poor spooner. I'm glad I got the document off of that because I think it's been yeah. sitting in my closet since. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was spur of the moment. It yeah, yeah. Generated a tremendous interest. I mean, people were really fascinated you could do something like that. 